Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name's uh, Anthony Joy. I'm, I'm happy to say I'm the moderator for this first panel for the uh, CAFE conference this morning. Um, uh, I'm uh, an Arsenal fan. Um, I used to be the chair of the Arsenal Disabled Supporters Association. And uh, our session this morning is around what's it like to be a disabled uh, away supporter. Um, I can tell you from personal experience, uh, it can be very different um, and has good and bad points compared to uh, our wider number of uh, supporters going away. Um, I've been to 68 away European um, matches as a wheelchair user. Um, and I think in since 1994, I've only sat with my own supporters in, on five times. So um, it's going to be an interesting session for about 45 minutes. Um, I'm delighted to be joined by um, some colleagues. Uh, Ted Morris, um, a disabled uh, Liverpool fan and uh, the secretary for the Liverpool Disabled Supporters Association. Uh, John Attenborough, a disabled Dundee fan. I'll make sure it's Dundee, not Dundee United, just in case I make that mistake. Other, friend, other, way, around, other way around, Anthony. It's Dundee the other end, the other end of the road. <laughs> um, Elena Popova, uh, a CSK uh, Moscow uh, supporter and the Russian national fan team. Uh, and also Niklas Funka, uh, a disabled Werder Bremen fan. Um, morning, everyone. Thank you for joining uh, for this, this panel. Um, we are going to talk about, have a few uh, Slido polls that will go through the morning. So uh, please engage with that on Slido with the hashtag CAFE, uh, C-A-F-E. Um, there are th three key questions. Um, how many disabled fans on the conference today uh, regularly attend their away their club's away matches? Um, have you ever sat in with the home supporters um, at, as opposed to your own supporters? Um, and do you feel uh, that you, as an away supporter, have uh, an equal match day experience at away matches uh, compared to uh, your club's non-disabled fans? So it will pick back, come back to those at the end of the, the panel. So please engage with that. Um, for now, um, I'm going to throw open the, the panel to a few questions uh, with Ted in the first uh, instance. So Ted um, uh, from the Liverpool DSA perspective, and I know you've had a long uh, sort of history of away supporting um, with the Reds. Um, can you uh, tell us in your own words what, what you enjoy uh, going to away matches with Liverpool? Hi, Anthony. Nice to meet you. Uh, basically, most of all, it's the camaraderie that you only get from away games, especially in Europe, where you're seeing the same old faces just in different places. But most of all, from a personal point of view, uh, I've got two daughters who are 23 and 24, and the first European away was 17 years ago. They were very young. It was Olymp Olympiakos in Athens. So uh, for 17 years, that's basically been our family life, you know, going to European aways, because that feeling that you get of being with, you know, a group of supporters who are as passionate as you are about seeing our team play. And in that time, Ted, um, obviously... You you first attended away games as as without your disability, but now as a disabled fan. Can you explain some of the differences that you've experienced? Yeah, I'm not far off at 100 European aways now, and 75% of them was as non-disabled support. I, it, it's, if I talk about the first one with the two, me two girls was in Athens, I was able to go up the Acropolis with them. We got some lovely pictures. Wouldn't be able to do that today. Um, now we've got to think about the transport accessibility, where we can go, where we can stay, how we get the game, how we don't get the game. So it's it's just a it's a massive difference, Anthony. And even to the extent where building up that many credits over the years, when we get um, an allocation of away tickets, we could get three thousand if we're going to one of the bigger grounds, Bay in Munich or what have you. We could get five wheelchair tickets which then becomes a major scramble irrespective of how many European credits I've built up over the years. So that's one of the main main obstacles is the, the allocation of tickets for these away games and the obstacles that we have to come. You know, when 75% of your life you've been non-disabled, you just go to the match and you jump on a train and you go to the game. Um, it's, it's just not like that when you're in a wheelchair. It's, it's, it's really, really difficult as... You're no doubt aware by, you know, the amount of games you've been with the Gunners. Yeah. 
um, you know, on, on that point, I mean, we, we've we've obviously uh, Arsenal and Liverpool have clashed uh, in in European competition only yeah. once, and we lost. Um, so let's move on with that bit. But um, <laughs> can you explain about the planning of an away trip? I know the example with Arsenal isn't they're probably that helpful, but when you go abroad, um, what what research, what planning do you have to uh, you know to find out your information and things like that? What what depth do you have to go to? Yeah, well, it, the, the draw for the last 16 of the Champions League will be on Monday. I'm already planning now for where we can go. Accessibility, how we get there, assistance with the airlines, getting to and from the stadiums. Um, a, a million and one thing to do that you never had to think about when you were non-disabled. These are real issues, you know, how do we get the ground? What What is available in the ground? And um, there's a lot of things that you, you, you have to take in, into consideration with it. It's like three of, the, three of the possible teams we could play, Villarreal, PSG and Salzburg. I've had issues in the past as a wheelchair user. Villarreal, um, I'm at the other side of the stadium where my two daughters are in the other end of the stadium, locked in. Uh, police and stewards not letting me near them after the game. Terrified them, going to be separated from my daughters. That's a real life problem. Uh, and then a 30 minute walk push to, to the coaches where there was no directions. Paris Saint Germain was even worse. After the game, nearest Metro, uh, with me daughter who was 19 at the time, got to the nearest Metro, no excessive thing, uh, just obstructed view. Apart from our SLO, uh, Yana Shiribi, she, she dealt with um, Salzburg staff and sat us in the old men. We could see half the pitch. You know, it's a long way to go to see off the pitch, real life problems and that you just don't have as non-disabled, you know. Just on that point, Ted, how many uh, have you ever made a, pla a plan to go abroad um, without knowing that A, the stadium was accessible and B, you had a ticket allocation for accessible tickets? Have you just booked the flights and your hotels anyway? Because I know well, I we, we will do that as soon as Monday comes, Anthony, irrespective of what information, being able to find out. I will have the hotel lined up, accessible hotel. I'll have the flights lined up and I will book them straight away. It's it's really difficult to find access, you know, about a lot of stadiums. Cafe, really good. But there's instances where you've got some accessible, you know, you've got information that a stadium is accessible. You get there and it's not accessible at all. Uh, you know, and it, it just raises issues on the day of the game. And, you know, we've had one where there was no transport once we got, got went to Genk, got tramped off in the city centre. There was no transport. I had two miles to go on an electric wheelchair that was like running out of power. Re, re, real issues and accessibilities, you know, and what is available regards um, stadiums in Europe is it's few and far between. And it's probably a, a, a similar issue that I've experienced, but around sitting in with home supporters. Um, can you just speak to speak to um, to that around some of the the, the the issues or the the experiences you've had? In, you know, sitting with your, the other fans. Well, first and foremost, I find it an extremely upsetting experience. You know, I've spent seventeen years of my life going to match with my wife and two daughters. My wife will be with me at some end of the ground, whether it be Villarreal, Bayern Munich, um, Dortmund. There, there's three that just spring to mind: Salzburg. So I've, for 17 years, for 75% of that time, I've been able to sit with my daughters and join a European away game, which is, you know, a tradition of our family. Then all of a sudden, you know, I'm sitting in a, in a, in a home end where we're liable to abuse. You know, we do, we do get abuse. We had, a, we had a terrible experience in Munich where we were just getting abuse. You know, sometimes it's better if you lose because you, you're not, you know, we users. We, we just don't need that. But you get it. But the, 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 the most thing is the feeling of isolation. If anything happens with my daughters, they're in the other end of the ground. I, I, I can't assist them. You know, wheelchair users following a team around Europe should never, never be allowed to sit in at home. And they should be able to sit with the away supporters, especially if they've got family members in that in that end. It's just, it just, it, it just, I find it absolutely unacceptable that in 2021 we have not got facilities within every stadium in Europe where they can accommodate a amount of wheelchair users users with the away fans it's just it beggars belief really completely agree uh, Ted as well I mean on that point uh, what you know 
the people that are on the conference today, um, you know, our, your, our fellow fans, the governing bodies and agencies across Europe, um, what would you say to them? What's your message to them? What my message to them would be, I'm also vice chairman of the Premier League Disability Advisory Group, and we're currently checking compliance with Premier League clubs towards the accessible stadia guidelines, which are there to facilitate and assist disabled supporters. When you think there's over 800,000 um, people can accommodate the 20 teams in the Premier League, yet on any, any one given weekend, only 7,000 of them are disabled supporters. There's an awful lot to be done. So what I what I would, you know, sincerely ask the clubs and the governing bodies to do in the first instance, just get clubs to comply with the accessible stadium guidelines. But don't just look to meet the minimum standards. Try and set some standards for disabled supporters so we can do what I was able to do for 75% of my life and enjoy watching my football team with my family and enjoying the experience without having to worry about all the things that we do. It's, um, it just really doesn't have to be like this. Do you think, Ted, that those, those lessons, that, that sort of approach here in the UK can be applied and, and would benefit across Europe? Yeah, well, I, I think the Premier League can set the standards. It's probably the strongest uh, league in, in Europe at the moment. So, you know, Premier League can set the standards of what they can do for disabled supporters. You know, I'm sure CAFE and UEFA will buy into that and ensure that other other countries, other associations try to meet the same standards. Atletico Madrid are a shining example of what we what can be done. When you go there, the, the Spanish staff, the accessibility team, they treat you like royalty. The tribunes are fantastic. They make sure you've got everything that you need. They are a, they are a fantastic role model that every every team in Europe Every club in Europe sh should be aiming to meet the standards that they set. Ted, thank you very much for your time. Thanks. Some really, really good points there. And definitely one I can resonate with personally. Um, if I can uh, introduce uh, John uh, Attenborough, um, I'm going to correct myself now because I said Dundee fan, but now I'm quite wrong to say it's the other end of the road, isn't it? Yeah, just across the road. Just across the road. <laughs> well, I do apologise for that. The faux pas straight away. Um, uh, John, can I ask you to, uh, you know, sort of explain why you you enjoy and what you take out from going um, to away matches uh, with Dun Dundee United? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, I I just I just love you know I love waking up in the morning on on an away day, knowing that you're going to be travelling to a new ground. You're travelling with your own support as well, and you're just and just enjoying the atmosphere and you know the banter between the between the two the two grounds it's um it, it's completely different to a home match because it's only just like a small group of maybe the sort of hardcore supporters who kind of travel to you know particularly long distances um for away games um and you know i i, I love what one thing that I love just as a football fan in general is visiting, you know, stadiums that I've maybe never been into before as well. You know, I just love, you know, visiting new stadiums and even even, you know, getting to experience a bit of the town or the, the city you've maybe never been to before as well. And, you know, just getting a getting a feel for the place and the, the clubs that you're going to see in that. Thanks. Um <laughs> Can it, obviously, I've got the notes in front of me, and it says you 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 do attend on every day, every game with your uh, your 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 assistant um, dog. Your 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 what's your dog's name? Sam. Sam. Sam well, shout out to Sam. Um, <laughs> you recently attended, wanted to attend a match, but you refused to entry um, because of Sam uh, or, or or Sam coming with you. Um, could you be able to explain to to everyone? what what happened on in that instance and and how you felt at the time yeah that was that was a first for me um and i wanted to it was first of all it was a league it was a league cup game midweek league cup game i wanted to go to um and it was it was for one of one of the big i won't i won't say who it was but it was one of the big clubs in scotland and i rang the ticket office to to get to get a ticket um that was where there was going to be extra space for myself and sam and i explained 
uh, to the ticket office that you know I want I I'd I, I be coming along. I'm visually impaired, and I have a guide dog. And they 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 got right back to me and said, "Oh, sorry, we don't allow guide dogs inside the stadium." And I was I, I'd never had that before, and I was a bit taken aback. Really, I was like, "Well, first of all, it's illegal, you know, under the UK Equality Act." assistance dogs are allowed to accompany their owners in any public setting and then i got in contact with cafe about um about the issues that it was it was causing and the way it made me feel as well and they contacted the club on my behalf as well to explain that this just wasn't acceptable and i think they tried to they tried to, they tried to say that it was because of like covid restrictions and there was a red zone in place so they couldn't sit me in a certain area but i i, I didn't accept that as as an excuse they, they first of all they just flat out refused to give me a ticket because of my guide dog they actually said to me you know if you wanted to have a person as a sighted guide that was fine but you just couldn't bring your dog into the stadium um and it just made me feel really like you know it, it just it just made me feel really not not welcome if you know what i mean that that's shocking that's absolutely shocking i mean regardless of the fact it's it's illegal as you say it's it's, it's just absolutely um you know in in current times just a, a terrible thing to hear um because obviously that instance you know and, and this red zone was because of the pandemic and whatever do you feel that the accessible services and the facilities as as a blind supporter um that do you think is, has a quality to it for you as a, as a blind supporter yeah um i must say actually for most of the grounds that i've been to in scotland the audio descriptive commentary has actually been really good and there's only maybe a small handful of grounds where it's been um maybe done by the local hospital radio team um, but the majority of clubs have their own sort of commentators who have been sort of trained uh, to, you know, commentate for visually impaired people. So they've sort of been through that training. And um, for example, even when I turn up to my uh, home ground at Tanadice, uh, you know, I walk through the accessible entrance and one of the commentators is actually there to sort of give me sighted guide to where my seat is and sort of sort me out with the headset and stuff. And you find that even in away grounds, um, you know, they're generally pretty good. Um, but I think have uh, knowing that that service is available um, is probably has an impact of whether you decide to go to the away game or not. Because if I go on a club's website, like if I'm going to an away day and I can't find any information about audio descriptive commentary or if there's going to be space where I could sit where there's a bit extra room for Sam to lie down, for instance, it, it, it can sometimes not be worth the hassle trying to find that out if it's not available there on their website. Because not only do you have to sort your ticket out, um, you've got to sort out your travel and assistance while traveling and um, things like that, which can also be a bit of a hassle sometimes, as I'm, I'm sure you're aware of as well. But from, um, on, those so, has, on those hassle issues, um, I, I, is there any situations for you that you wouldn't attend an away game because of those access, accessibility issues? Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, perhaps if the ground isn't maybe accessible by public transport, for instance, that might have a, a big impact. So obviously, I can't drive to to the away games, and quite often the coaches that um, the like the supporters buses that are put on for away games often don't have the sort of space for me and Sam to get to get on as well. So that can have an impact because I, I do a lot of traveling to away games through public transport and most grounds, I must say, are quite qu quite easily accessed by public transport. You might just have to get a taxi when you get out the station or whatever. But um, yeah, there's a, I think I think a lot of people, a lot of non-disabled away supporters don't realize the amount of planning and organization that goes into even just traveling to an away game. And and I mean that's the next question I was going to ask exactly that 
what do you, what would you particular look out for or try and research as to accurate and up-to-date information what things are, are you actually looking to find out from from uh, from those clubs yeah so i i want to find first of all if i'm deciding if i want to go to an away game i want to find out if a if they offer um audio descriptive commentary at the game i want to find out if there's uh, an accessible entrance to the ground, for instance, because obviously me and Sam can't go through the sort of traditional turnstiles and stuff. Um, you want to find out, you know, the nearest public transport links to the ground, and then you've got to sort of plan your travel on the side of that as well. See if there's train times that link in with when the match finishes, or if it's a if it's a long away day, look see if there's maybe a hotel you can stay in and make sure the hotel's accessible as well. You know, so there's a, there's a lot of sort of planning and organisation that goes into just deciding whether you go to an away game or not. Absolutely, and on that point, then join the final question two part is is if there's a you know a disabled supporter and hasn't been to an away game, what would you say to them today around to encourage them to go and do so? And the second part is. What was your, your your best stadium, best game that you've, you've attended to as an away fan? Yeah, um, I would I would say you know, I, I, if there's any sort of away fans that maybe haven't travelled to an away game and want to, I would say definitely, um, definitely look to see when your clubs play in away next. Maybe even try one that's maybe not too far away from you to start. With. I think that's probably a good starting point. That's how I started um, going to away games. And uh, then you kind of get the bug for it. You're like, oh, I want to do this again, you know, in two weeks' time. And uh, you sort of start to plan about going further afield. So I think just, just you know, put yourself out there and and, and definitely go go for it. Um, my And for my best away day experience... Um, it's probably going just across the street, actually, to Dens Park, and every time we we beat them over there. So <laughs> any 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 time that we've won at Dens Park is probably my favourite away day. And and on that point as well, it's literally right across the street from our grounds, so there's not really too much travel planning or that. So you can just go and enjoy beating Dundee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's an, a, 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 an annual occurrence, mate. But thank you very much oh, for your time. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks, Cheers, Anthony. John. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to now uh, pass over and uh, um, introduce uh, Elena from uh, CSK uh, Moscow and a member of their club, DSA. And I know Elena, uh, having known her for a while, um, it was uh, heavily involved in the uh, 2018 World Cup uh, and the planning per, uh, around. So good morning, Elena. Um I know you go away following CSK, um, but also you've gone as a neutral fan to see other other stadiums. Co, can you tell us um, what you enjoy from going to, uh, to away matches? Hello, everyone. And I could say that I really love to expand my possibilities because, you know, uh, every trip is a challenge. And probably you heard that uh, life begins when you leave your comfort zone. So I like doing this. And actually, football is a reason to go somewhere. And it's a great combination of uh, meeting the city and the country and also visit football. So uh, I could give an example. In the age of 17, that was my first foreign uh, away trip. And I went to Birmingham in February. So I believe that if there wouldn't be football hardly i would go there uh, in february in the age of 17 to england without uh, watching football so uh, and another example uh, in the same age uh, i went to turkey and uh, i faced a lot of barriers there but i met csk fans and since that time we've been known each other it's already 11 years so we go together to the stadium uh, home matches and also keep on traveling together to away matches so it's also another thing that I really enjoy a lot. Thanks, Elena. I, I know I know you probably saw the facial expression, both me and Ted, when you said we went to Birmingham. Um, <laughs> so, you know, why not? Why why somewhere else? I don't know. Um, you spoke about your experiences, about um, the, the, the barriers you faced, um, you know, in, in those trips that you, you, you mentioned. Um, could you explain a little bit more about those barriers, about those you faced and, and what actually they were? 
I think the biggest challenge, the biggest barrier is a lack of information because I'm being a disabled person going to the stadium and without knowing information, how can I get to the stadium? How can I move uh, uh, inside the stadium? How can I feel comfortable there? It's a um, really huge problem. And another thing that uh, I mostly face is uh, um, that a way sector is not usually accessible for uh, disabled people. And I also had very interesting experience in Czech Republic. I went there and I had to sit on the uh, very good seats, really. It was a very good sideline and everything was fine, except one thing that I had to sit with the home fans. Uh, it was fine, but uh, when my team started to lose and the fans around started to understand that I'm a foreigner and they wanted to make jokes and to, to speak to me, but uh, inside I believe that uh, my team will do their best. <laughs> so it turned away, we scored one, two, and then three goals and we won three, two, and then the situation changed. So I was happy, but they were even sadder because uh, the team lost and uh, secondly, uh, because I was there with them celebrating uh, the victory. So it's interesting experience, but I could also say that uh, not having accessible seats when the uh, away circuit can be also dangerous for wheelchair user or not a disabled person. Um as a disabled fan, and if you've, you've travelled with friends who are, who are non-disabled, uh, do you feel you have uh, an equal match day experience, you know, compared to to, to friends or, or other supporters? Also differently, and uh, it depends on the stadium, but I could say from my positive uh, experience that when I went to Wembley Stadium, that was, I think, uh, one of the best experiences in my life because I could go with my friends to the stadium, I could go uh, to the sector, and I was very surprised that I could enter with my friends to the, to the sector, away sector, and actually I didn't expect this. And we could support the team together, and I could sing the songs, and I could applause, and do whatever I want because uh, comparing to my bad experience in Czech Republic, I couldn't express my emotions. But I believe that we go to the stadium, uh, not like going to the theater, just go and see the performance. But I believe that we go to the stadium to feel the atmosphere and to give your emotions to even to your team. But when you see it on the other sector, you can't express it just uh, because it probably can be not safe for you. So this experience at Wembley Stadium was really incredible and was unexpected because I didn't believe that I could go to the stadium and be with my friends, with my family, supporting my team in a different country. So that was incredible, really. Good stuff. I'm glad, I'm glad Wembley uh, met your expectations. Um, do you feel that um, clubs uh, across Europe um, do, you, do they understand the barriers you've you've described morning um, by for disabled supporters, and you know particularly for those of us who are travelling as an away fan? Do you feel that the clubs themselves actually are recognised that they, there are different challenges, and and they, are they uh, you know accepting of that? Very difficult question, <laughs> but I, I can say that uh, I can compare already because, uh, as I said earlier, I'm I've been traveling. The situation is really visible, and uh, I, I I do really appreciate this work, and <laughs> that's getting much easier to travel. So once again, yeah, thanks for Kaf, and I hope that it will be even better and probably in the nearest which we even won't need this work because it will be equal so there will be no work to to be done absolutely here here um that your your experience in the planning and 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 you know your your role with the, the world cup in 2018 um what insight did that give you around the role of uh, a disability access officer um you know and the 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 role they play in clubs across Europe. Uh, the work of it is a unique experience, actually, and uh, I'm happy that it was in my country, and I'm happy that uh, it was the best uh, in uh, accessibility, and it was the most accessible tournament ever. So um, that was an incredible atmosphere, and uh, from my side as a being disabled person, I felt 
really uh, equal and uh, not facing barriers. So that was really incredible. Great. And, and a final question for you, Elena, uh, similar to what I, I finished with Ted. Um, what message do you have to our fellow fans who are traveling if they haven't ever been before and also to the, the governing bodies that, that we um, sort of run the game? What, what message do you have for those about looking to improve the experience of disabled fans? Just one. <laughs> okay. Just, well, just one, just one, but five if you want. Well, I think I could say that uh, try to welcome everyone at your stadium. And I mean, everyone, disabled people and non-disabled people, because I believe that these fans who know about your uh, experience in improving stadiums will would like to come to your stadium and experience your hospitality. So uh, from my experience, also following different clubs and knowing how they improve uh, their um, accessibility. So uh, I could say that uh, FC Wolverhampton is really incredible. And uh, if there is anyone from this club here, so just uh, I would pleasure, I would like to come to your stadium to experience your hospitality. So I think that is uh, that would be my message. Just to welcome everyone and people will try to come to your uh, stadium to experience that. That's great. Thanks, Elena. Thank you. Um, so um, our, our final panelist is Niklas, uh, who's a Verda Bremen fan. Uh, uh, Nicholas, I, I I was last went to Werder Bremen in 1999, and Ray <laughs> Parler scored a hat trick. That's yeah. how long ago it was that I was the the the, the, uh, the Werder Bremen stadium. Um, similar I question that I asked. <laughs> so you were there as well, mate. Well, it was yeah. it, it's a one off Ray and Parler hat trick. It's a, a little little, little too, but I was there. <laughs> <laughs> um, similar to what I, you know we discussed with Ted, John, and Elena. Um, what is it about that you enjoy going to away matches as a disabled supporter? And I'm, I'm aware that it's not just following Werder Bremen. It's, it's you know, ground hopping for you as well. Yeah, at first, thanks for having me in the panel. Um, my, why I uh, travel to away games is, it's, uh, I think it's my duty to re representing the honour of my city and my club as a home, as uh, away. Before I was in the Visha, I was into the fan scene at Bremen and uh, I tried to tra travel every away game. And it's, I think it's, it's for me, it's uh, very, very important to do this. It saved my life after my accident. So I can travel with my friends. We can drive with the bus or with the train, drinking some beer and have fun at the away game. So, and, uh, over the array traveling with Werder, I go to the ground hopping because I love travel. I love to see new cities, new stadiums, new countries. And uh, it's very, very uh, important for me to that I can do the traveling. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. And uh, particularly the beer bit, although I've, not, I've stopped <laughs> that going around now, but I agree with you. <laughs> Um, you told Aunt, uh, Amy from Cafe um, uh, ahead of the, the conference that um, happily your, your health and your condition is, has improved, but your, your requirements have changed. So you've moved from no longer needing uh, being a wheelchair user, but you can, be, you, you can access the stadium via as an ambulance supporter. Can you speak about the difference that you've experienced in terms of both the facilities and the different information um, and they they give you as a as, at different grounds. Yeah, it's it's make the thing very easy that that I uh, can walk now. It's uh, before when I was in Arisha, it was a very big planning to where can, where I go to the ground, who can drive me or can I drive at myself? Where the, are the trains? Where are the parking spots for disabled people? And uh, now when I'm walking, it's much easier. I only book my ticket and going to the bus or to the train. And uh, then when we are at the city where we play, I stepping out of the bus and going to the array sector. And it's very, it's more much fun that I can stand now in the array sector and not need to use the reshare spaces in the home sector at array games. So I can stand with my, I can stand with my friends. I can chanting. I, 
I am part of the of the rail sector and not only a, a visitor. And on that on that very point, what Ted said in his uh, start of the session is around you know as a wheelchair user, he would love to have exactly that same experience. Do you feel that now you um, have that as a, a as an ambulant access porter? Can you? Can you, you know, recognize those issues that Ted sort of um, spoke to at the start? Yeah, 100%. It's just, you are, have a friend, uh, you have a group of friends where you bear. You've been with these people since 10, 15 years, traveling uh, 100,000 of kilometers with them. And then you cannot stand with them in the same sector. It's very depressing to uh, stand there alone. So you want to stand with your friends. You want to chanting the scars. You want to waving the uh, the flags, and uh, it's one of the most thing uh, for me for traveling away games. It's the the community with the other fans, with your fan club, with your group, with your friends, or your family, and uh, that's uh, often it's not possible for wheelchair users. Great. Uh, you, final question for you. Uh, before I open a few more to to the whole group, um, Nicholas, what's your uh, what was your first your, your what was the best game, best stadium you visited, either at, both as a uh, Verda uh, fan, but also as a as a neutral? As I was with Verda, the best game was the 2009 Derby Weeks against Hamburg when we kicked Hamburg out of every competition this year. <laughs> and uh, it's starting there, the, the going down. With, but now we are the same shit like this <laughs> with our club. <laughs> But uh, this was the most intensive weeks for me. And it, as a groundhopper, my best experience was at Olympique Marseille. It's an incredible stadium. It's an incredible uh, ultra scene. It's, it was amazing. So you must every go to Olympic. It's very, very great. And very uh, nice uh, disability supporters group. So they helped me with tickets and they... They get me a warm welcome at the stadium and show me everything. It was very, very nice. Yeah, I, 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 I recognise that. I've, I've seen their, 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 uh, their group there once we we visited the velodrome before, and it's the strongest coffee I've ever had in the, my life. It, yeah. it, it, it makes me squint, <laughs> to be honest with you. Thanks, Nicholas. Um, we've got a few questions on the chat for for. So I'll open this up to all four of you. Uh, so just raise your hand. So the first question we've got is um we'd be interested to know how much word of mouth so my experience is being told to john and and so on and so on um how much does that plays uh uh in importance that supporters wouldn't attend to a game and whether that influences a positive or a negative experience so how much does you don't base your decisions on the information given by the club rather than another supporter so we would share the stories between so if i john's got a hand up first so i'll pass that to you john yeah um that's an excellent point um because i'm actually friends with a lot of other visually impaired people a, a lot of other visually impaired uh football fans from different clubs and quite often they'll say to me oh if you come to this ground or that and i've said no i've never never been there and they would they would tell you, oh, well, they've got this available, they've got audio descriptive commentary, they've got, you know, a, a section where sort of visually impaired people might sit and there's extra room for assistance dogs or that. And that information isn't available on the club's own website. So sometimes just having your friends or other supporters tell you that information makes you go, oh, you know, the next time we're playing away at that grounds, I'll go, you know. So that makes a huge difference. Great. Thanks, John. Um, Ted, yep. Yeah, to be honest, um, I'm just, like, best to be honest, other people's experiences, irrespective of whether it's different to the travel information and what have you, it still st wouldn't stop me going because I would go anyway. And, and I find that, like, speaking from Liverpool Football Club, all of our wheelchair users are exactly the same, <clears throat> excuse me, the passionate. Um, and irrespective of what's there, we are going to go anyway. And I suppose that's why accessibility and access is so important. If there is issues that are out there, you know, more than wear them out between fans, contact Cafe, 
contact the, the club that you've just visited and make it better for the next group of supporters that go. Yeah, you know, that that's the best way you can use where the mouth. You know, use it in a positive way where we can impact upon fellow supporters' experience, even if they're from a different club. Make it better for them the next time we go. That's the best way to pass where the mouth around, in my opinion. Right. Thanks, Ted. Um, we've got a, some other questions um, for everyone. Um, what do you expect when communi com communicating with uh, disability access officers from the away team? So not your own club, but the away team you're attending. What do you expect from them? Go ahead, um, Ted. You expect knowledge. You expect assistance. We, we just had the situation where there was a few issues when we played West Ham United. Um, over the following two weeks after that, the uh, West Ham United put great importance on what happened to us, wheelchair users, ambulance, disabled supporters, non-disabled fans as well. Through the DLO, SLO and DAO at West Ham United, they were able to address all them issues and make it better for the next team's visit, which I think was Brighton and Old Albion. So, you know, what you'd expect, you expect them to listen, Anthony. You want them to have the knowledge, and especially if you can bring something to them and say, this, this is what we experienced last time. We were at your ground. Can you fix this to facilitate us? So, so that's the two things, isn't it? Knowledge and assistance. That's all we ask for. So we can just enjoy the match like anyone else can. That's great. Cheers, Ted. Um, Nicholas, yeah, you got your hand up. Yeah, I think it's very important that when you call the club or the ticket office, that they know where the tickets get, where the spaces is. So I have to often, often when I call the, when I go hop, hopping in the in the uh, in other countries, I call the ticket office area. Can I get a wheelchair ticket? And they, you know, I don't know if we have any wheelchair spaces. So. I think it's very, very important to uh, teach the staff from, from, from the clubs that they know, yeah, we have so and so much resource spaces and we have uh, uh, spaces for blind people. And it's just, I think that we, uh, the clubs must teach more the ticket office and the club informations because the websites are very often not good to with information so uh, it's very high in in uh, our section sections uh, that you find when they have uh, informations about wheelchair users but many clubs uh, don't have any information on the websites thanks nicholas um i, I think uh, elena you're first then john yeah i just uh, quickly wanted to, to add probably flexibility so when you speak to a disabled person, probably you will need to take a decision on your own and to, uh, as Ted said, uh, listen to the person and to be flexible to change the seat or to provide more uh, services or something that disabled person requires. Thanks, Elena. Completely agree. Yeah. And and John? Um, yeah, I would just like to reiterate the points that uh, Ted, Elena and Nicholas just made there um, and also add to that that make, make purchasing uh, you know disability tickets for away fans a little bit easier as well because um, sometimes purchasing the tickets can be really quite a laborious thing as well you know any other away supports can maybe just go on the website click a few buttons and they've got their ticket but uh, for us we phoned the ticket office and I had a issue recently with um, a club in Scotland where I rang the ticket office to purchase uh, the ticket and uh, they were like yeah yeah that's absolutely fine um, can you just scan us a letter of proof of eligibility and then we'll get somebody to ring you back and purchase it. and you know it it can take a couple of days doing that um, whereas other supporters can you know just go on the website click a few buttons and get their ticket so I would say you know, maybe streamline the process of actually purchasing the tickets and that would take away a lot of disabled people's anxiety as well about uh, deciding whether or not to go to away games. That's great, John. Yeah, I completely agree. Particularly the, the, the hassle of booking tickets is 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 a pain, I think, for most most supporters wherever wherever country we're based in at the moment. Yeah. Um I want to thank 
all of you on the, on the panel today. It's been really informative and, and uh, I, you know, personally, it resonates with me significantly. Um, I think my takeaway um, sort of points across the, the four of you is is the, 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 the importance of information to make some informed decisions about whether you're going to go to a game. So currently I'm waiting to get a response from a, a team in Germany. I won't name them, but if I don't get it very soon, I'm probably not going to go um because i don't know if i'll get a ticket and i'm i'm i'll, I'll love to see the city that they're going to play in but at the moment that's a decision for me um the knowledge i think you just spoke to there ted about you know the the, the dao from the respective clubs and and equally the stewards um that, that you know what the facilities we have and and the processes that they have at those clubs i think that's an, a, a powerful uh, takeaway um and elena your point there about the flexibility um and and nicholas in your case where you you know your previous approach has been a wheelchair user to ambulant i think that flexibility is is a key point and no one there's no one standard that will suit every disabled supporter and they need to be addressed to their their their, uh, their needs um i think it's been a great uh, uh opening session for the conference um so i think we're having a break now for about 20 minutes uh, so go and get some refreshment wherever you are um, and please be ready to uh, uh, dial in to the next session uh, uh, at 45 minutes past uh, the hour. So it's about another 20 minutes or so. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll, that one there is around accessibility of mega sporting events. So uh, that's quite interesting. I don't know what a mega sporting event counts to, but we'll all, we'll all dial in for that one. So uh, thank you, everyone um we're the, the poll we're going to run out a little bit of time on the results of that but we'll make sure that's circulated in some of the notes and the recordings um after the conference but uh, thank you for the time and uh see you again music, music.